Pembroke Castle is a medieval castle in Pembroke, West Wales. Standing beside the River Clydeday, it underwent major restoration work in the early 20th century. The castle was the original seat of the Earldom of Pembroke. In 1093 Roger of Montgomery built the first castle at the site when he fortified the promontory during the Norman invasion of Wales. A century later this castle was given to William Marshall by Richard I. Marshall, who would become one of the most powerful men in 12th century Britain, rebuilt Pembroke in stone creating most of the structure that remains today. Construction The castle is sited on a strategic rocky promontory by Clare de Estuary. The first fortification on the site was a Norman Martin Bailey. It had earthen ramparts and a timber palisade. In 1189, Pembroke Castle was acquired by William Marshall. The Earl Marshall then set about turning the earth and wood fort into an impressive Norman stone castle. The inner ward, which was constructed first, contains the huge round keep with its domed roof. Its original first floor entrance was through an external stairwell. Inside, a spiral stairwell connected its four stories. The keep's domed roof also has several putlog holes that supported a wooden fighting platform. If the castle was attacked, the hoarding allowed defenders to go out beyond the keep's massive walls above the heads of the attackers. The inner ward curtain wall had a large horseshoe-shaped gateway. But only a thin wall was required along the promontory. This section of wall has a small observation turret and a square stone platform. Domestic buildings including William Marshall's Great Hall and private apartments were within the inner ward. In the late 13th century, additional buildings were added to the inner ward including a new Great Hall. A 55-step spiral stairwell was also created that led down to a large limestone cave, known as Wagon Cavern, beneath the castle. The cave, which was created by natural water erosion, was fortified with a wall, barred gateway and arrow slits. It may have served as a boathouse or a sally port to the river where cargo or people could have been transferred. The outer ward was defended by a large twin-towered gatehouse, barbican and several round towers. The outer wall is five meters thick in places and constructed from siltstone ashlar. Although Pembroke Castle is a Norman-style enclosure castle with great keep, it can be more accurately described as a linear fortification because, like the later 13th century castles at Carnarfon and Connie, it was built on a rock promontory surrounded by water. This meant that attacking forces could only assault a narrow front. Architecturally, Pembroke's thickest walls and towers are all concentrated on its landward side facing the town, the river creating a natural defense around the rest of its perimeter. History Pembroke Castle stands on a site that has been occupied since, at least, the Roman period. Norman Lord, Roger of Montgomery founded the first castle here in the 11th century. Gerald de Windsor, ancestor of the Fitzgeralds of Ireland, was constable of Pembroke Castle from 1102. Although only made from earth and wood, Pembroke Castle resisted several Welsh attacks and sieges over the next 30 years, the castle establishing itself at the heart of the Norman controlled lands of southwest Wales. In the 12th century, Robert of Bellamy, 3rd Earl of Shrewsbury, Roger de Montgomery's eldest son, was forced to forfeit all his British lands and titles after he rebelled against Henry I. By 1138, King Stephen had given Pembroke Castle to Gilbert de Clare, who used it as an important base in the Norman invasion of Ireland. In August 1189, Richard I arranged the marriage of Isabel, de Clare's granddaughter, to William Marshall who received both the castle and the title, Earl of Pembroke. He had the castle rebuilt in stone, establishing the great keep at the same time. Marshall was succeeded by each of his five sons. His third son, Gilbert Marshall, was responsible for enlarging and further strengthening the castle between 1234 and 1241. However, all of Marshall's sons died childless. In 1247, the castle was inherited by William de Valence, a half-brother of Henry III who became Earl of Pembroke through his marriage to Joan, William Marshall's granddaughter. The Valence family held Pembroke for seventy years. During this time, the town was fortified with defensive walls, three main gates and a postern. Pembroke Castle became de Valence's military base for fighting the Welsh princes, 
during the conquest of North Wales by Edward I between 1277 and 1295. But on the death of Aymer de Valence, second Earl of Pembroke, William de Valence's son, the castle passed through marriage to the Hastings family. In 1389, 17 year old John Hastings died in a jousting accident, ending a line of inheritance stretching back 250 years. Pembroke Castle then reverted to Richard II. Short tenancies were then granted by the Crown for its ownership. By 1400 on Wayne Glinda Micron had begun a rebellion in Wales. However Pembroke escaped attack because the castle's constable, Francis T. H. Degree Court, paid off Glinda Micron in gold. Eventually the castle and the earldom were presented to Jasper Tudor by his half-brother Henry VI in 1452. Tudor brought his widowed sister-in-law, Margaret Beaufort, to Pembroke where she gave birth to her only child, the future King Henry VII of England. In the 15th and 16th centuries the castle was a place of peace. But at the outbreak of the English Civil War, although most of South Wales sided with the King, Pembroke declared for Parliament. It was besieged by Royalist troops but was saved after parliamentary reinforcements arrived by sea from nearby Milford Haven. Parliamentary forces then went on to capture the Royalist castles of Tenby, Haverford West and Carew. But in 1648, when the war was at its close, Pembroke's leaders changed sides and led a Royalist uprising. Oliver Cromwell came to Pembroke and took the castle after a seven-week siege. Its three leaders were found guilty of treason and Cromwell ordered the castle to be destroyed. Townspeople were even encouraged to disassemble the fortress and reuse its stone for their own purposes. The castle was then abandoned and allowed to decay. It remained in ruins until 1880 when a three year restoration project was undertaken. Nothing further was done until World War I. Veteran Major General Sir Ivor Phillips acquired the castle in 1928 and started an extensive restoration of the castle's walls, gatehouses, and towers. After his death a trust was set up for the castle, jointly managed by the Phillips family and Pembroke Town Council. Present day, Pembroke Castle has been a Grade I listed building since 1951. The castle is open to the public. It remains the largest privately owned castle in Wales. Tableaus and displays depict the many highlights in its history. Film appearances in 1976 Pembroke Castle was used for the jousting scenes in the film Jabberwocky, directed by Terry Gilliam. In 1989, the BBC used Pembroke Castle as the set of King Myra's castle in its adaptation of Prince Caspian, one of C.S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia. In 2011, Pembroke Castle was used for some scenes of Richard II shown as part of the BBC's Shakespeare season The Hollow Crown. Pembroke appeared one of the opening scenes in The Lion in Winter, in which the future Richard I of England jousts with another knight. Gallery. References. External links. Pembroke Castle website, Castles of Wales website with pictures of the castle, Great Castle of Wales website with more pictures, www.geograph.co.uk, Photos of Pembroke Castle, Pembroke Castle, Description and Sources.